the fantasy ad with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. All right, everyone. Hello, and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. My name is Jonathan Chan. Uh, Richard will not be joining me this week, but fortunately, we have uh, hashtag the return, uh, the man who finished 16th in Scott Fishbowl nine, and who put up one of the worst scores in Scott Fishbowl ten. Uh, Kevin Wo back on the podcast after a couple of weeks out. Kevin, how's it going? What an introduction! Thank you for the <laughs> just the. Wow, I feel so great about myself when you bring up Scott Fishbowl 9 and then immediately comes crashing to the floor when I tried to forget about that score that I put up. Um, just I, I don't I have no excuse for that. That was real bad. But I'm I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be talking about some football again. And um I mean I picked a horrible week to get in because we're gonna be talking a lot of shit about my Ravens, but I guess we'll get into it. Did you wanna wait to get into it talk a little about clay thompson missing the year or you just wanted to save that for the basketball stuff what's wrong with you dude, <laughs> dude do, do you want to fight like do you honestly want to you, this is this is what it, there was no mention that you were going to talk about all the things that hurt me just got to bring you back yeah. into the podcast properly you know i got nothing for the clay thing. the clay thing is more hurtful than the ravens being horrible <laughs> It's okay. I'm also hurt that the Raptors lost all of their big men and just decided to become the Hornets and sign two big white guys. But you know, Aaron Baines. That's not the same. Don't don't try to compare compare our situation. It's not the same. But we both lost Giannis. He's not coming to either of our teams now. So no, I still disagree. <laughs> but you already lost your first round pick. You're not trading Wiseman for him. Oh, but Kelly Oubre is an enticing piece. You know, <laughs> Oubre Wiggins, Timberwolves pick. Draymond's contract, who says no? I don't know. <laughs> what a beautiful trade package. Anyways, on to football. So I'm sure we just lost half our listeners because of that. Uh, all right. So in the news, a bunch of, uh, well, we'll start with the biggest injury of the week. Joe Burrow, first overall pick, uh, got his knee completely shredded, uh, torn ACL, torn MCL, and other mysterious structural damage that came out after his MRI today. Uh, tough, tough start to his career. And at this point, if you're Burrow, are you going to sandbag your recovery until the the Bengals bring up an actual O line to protect you? I mean, <laughs> that's a that would be the smart thing to do theoretically. I <laughs> uh, I mean, if I'm him, like this is this is your worst fear, right? Like you put a bad offensive line in front of the guy, and the worst has happened. Like he's completely destroyed his knee. Um. There's a chance he could be back by week one next week next year, but uh, I would call it 50-50 at best. Uh, it's just pretty bad. I mean, Burrow was – I know Herbert's been killing it, but Burrow to me was you know just as impressive as a co- rookie quarterback out there. So kind of sucks to see his, his uh, career derailed so quickly. Um, I mean, hopefully he'll bounce back. I mean, we've seen quarterbacks bounce back from knee injuries before. So, so I think he'll probably be okay going forward. But, yeah, just sucks that we won't see him for another year or so. Yeah, especially for a guy that rarely actually took hits at LSU, and now he's just took so so many in his first ten games. It's brutal. But, yeah, but this is this is one of those. This is another example where it's like quarterbacks. It's not necessarily like running quarterbacks who get hurt. It's like you just get hurt randomly if you're just standing in the pocket. Yeah, it's like almost nothing to do with rushing ability. Unless you're Cam, who just never gets protected by the refs and just takes hits to the head. Yeah, constantly. but Cam is also huge, so. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Like <laughs> This is fair. Um, all right, so we got starting now with uh, section one of, uh, of the uh, the Ravens news. Both J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram uh, were placed on the COVID list. I think they both tested positive, right? Oh, uh, I didn't even I didn't even realize they tested positive. I thought they were just on the list. Well, either way, they're both they're both on the list. I think they both tested positive, but in any case, they're both out for Thursday's uh, yeah. game. Uh, yeah, obviously, they both tested positive. Obviously, this is uh, the Gus bus. So this is this is all you, the guy you've been pushing, finally gets the, the starter's touches here. Yeah, I mean, I've been pushing J.K. Dobbins in front of him. I wanted <laughs> Dobbins to be the guy, and obviously he was this last game. He had 15 touches uh, in the loss compared to uh, Ingram, who had three and looked just pathetically slow on them, and Gus, who had like two. Justice Hill played a couple snaps, but really didn't do anything. Dobbins was the guy. It looked like he had kind of secured his role going forward, but... I mean, if he has COVID, he has COVID, and he is not going to be available for sure for this Thursday. We'll see if he tests positive uh, for next week's game 
or the week after a game. So uh, this Thursday, yeah, if you've got Gus Edwards available, um, I get I guess start him. I mean, the Steelers aren't a good matchup, but the Ravens' run game is always going to be able to get something done. So it'll be a decent start. Well, granted, last time you guys faced the Steelers, Gus ran for 87 yards and a touchdown, so it wasn't it wasn't a bad game. This time he's going to get yeah yeah he's looking at what, 20 mean, carries. Oof. Um, Justice yeah, Hill comes out of nowhere. Something like that. 15, 18 carries, something like that. I mean, the lots of uh, like people don't like to talk about it when when we they talk about the Ravens' struggles. They just like to say Lamar's a running back. So haha, of course they suck, but um. You know, we lost Yonda in the offseason. Ronnie Stanley went down with, like, a broken ankle. Then we lost Nick Boyle. So uh, we have, like, a center who doesn't know how to snap the ball, so we had to go to another center. Um, and then we have, like, we can't figure out our tackle rotation. We started, like, four different offensive line combinations. So it's, like, it's not exactly uh, – I wouldn't even say we have the same offensive line group that we had against the Steelers that week. Like, we are significantly weaker already up front. All right. Uh, so tough week for Edwards, but he's obviously the pickup there. Uh, another guy on the COVID list, Adam Thielen. Now there's he didn't test positive as far as we know. He's just placed on the COVID list for close contact, as far as I've read. Thielen out. Obviously, Justin Jefferson is the main beneficiary. He's not available in any league. Um, any thought to like BC Johnson or Irv Smith as the second receiving weapon in Minnesota, or is this going to be pure Dalvin Cook? For, uh, for this matchup yeah i would i would say pure dalvin cook although uh irv smith is interesting just because i'm sure we'll talk about it the tight end position is god awful this year and irv smith at least is doing some things um and you know if Thielen's going to be out he's going to get a couple more targets um but yeah i'm pretty sure it's going to be the dalvin cook justin jefferson show and just go from there yeah uh Thielen had a good game which we'll talk about more later which is so it's a shame if he has to miss uh miss this week uh onto a healthy QB uh Teddy Bridgewater was nearly active uh this past Sunday it was a very late scratch I think he dressed but didn't play I believe but anyways he didn't play uh Matt Rule's optimistic he's going to practice uh this week this Wednesday and be active on Sunday um PJ Walker was fun XFL alum was fun to watch uh, against in uh, you know shutout of the Lions. Is PJ Walker did better than Teddy Bridgewater? No, I don't. I think that's. I think it's fair to say he's not better than him, but it was not as bad as a showing as I, I thought it would be. Um, the Detroit defense is you know not not any great shakes, but uh, twenty four for thirty four for two hundred fifty eight yards, a touchdown. The two picks really killed you. Some of them were really bad. There was one in the end zone that was like. Dude, what are you doing? Uh, he also fumbled, didn't lose it though. So, um, I mean, he's a he's a good enough stand-in. Uh, he's not going to kill the um, Panthers' receiving value, but I do think Teddy is better. And I wonder if they do sit him for Week 12 since they have a Week 13 bye, just to get him back Week help for, uh, like for sure healthy for Week 14. Um, I think if Walker's in there, I'd wouldn't recommend starting him, but you can at least be certain that the wide re- the wide receivers are going to be okay. Yeah, uh, the one thing I noticed with Walker is that he actually looked for DJ Moore. Uh, he wasn't an afterthought that he was with Teddy under center, so that's one one guy that would benefit with uh, with Walker starting DJ Moore. Um, yeah, what do you have? Didn't he have like uh, ten plus targets, something like that? Yeah, he had, Moore had a big game plus the big, uh, what, I think fifty yard catch or something like that. Seven target or. Uh, seven catches on 11 targets for 127 yards and a 21 yard carry. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> what uh, maybe we, maybe we want Walker in there? Yeah. Uh, maybe, but the Panthers probably don't. But XFL MVP, you know, you got you got to take the MVP where you can get him. Yeah, uh, is he the guy who I saw like he's he's undefeated in all the starts? The XFL like he's, starts. He's te- technically six and zero in all professional starts because <laughs> he's five and zero in the X- XFL and one and zero in the NFL. Um. Yeah, that's probably him. Actually, he, he's the winningest quarterback in in league history. That's actually an amazing stat. They should they should start him just because of that. Honestly, what what a great thing to carry into. So there's something to talk about. Uh all right. Now we have to bring this back since we talk a lot about Julio between me and you. Anyways, uh, Julio Jones is hurt again. Uh, game de- game time decision against the Raiders this week. Um, 
Obviously, if he plays, you start him. But if Julio's out, do you bench the rest? Not bench, but how far do you downgrade the rest of the Falcons' offense considering how bad they looked last time Julio didn't play? Yeah, I mean, the same thing would be to bench them, but I, they get the Raiders this week, and I don't. I watch Jonathan Abrams play, and I just I can't imagine that they're not going to get some stuff done. Um, I, I think you're going to be okay. Like I wouldn't. I, obviously, you're going to play Calvin Ridley no matter what. I don't think he's benchable really at this point. Um, the question is, like, are you going to play Russell Gage or uh, what's the Hayden Hurst? Or... I am benching Hayden Hurst. He he is stapled to my bench after that goose egg weekend. Stapled, nail gun. See, see, Nano, you have to you have to talk to yourself. You have to look in the mirror and consider: is it Hayden Hurst's fault or is it your fault for starting him? I mean, it's not my fault. He, I didn't. He didn't get. He didn't catch anything. That's not my fault. I think it's your fault for counting on him. I, I counted on like. Four points in standard. I wasn't expecting a blow up. I just wanted like four points. That's all I cared about. That, Couldn't fair. get me that. Yeah, I don't know. No, come on. Um, but I mean, who's the other dude? All, all is all of my Zacchaeus or something like Zacchaeus? that. Zacchaeus. Um, that's the guy. Yeah, Zacchaeus. I mean, that's the question, right? Is like, are you going to be willing to start one of those two dudes, Gage or Zacchaeus, or Matt Ryan? Also, I would probably Matt Ryan kind of becomes like a high end quarterback too without Julio. Just, well, just because the matchup is still good. In the last three games this year without Julio, Ryan finished as QB 23, QB 26, and QB 27. So, All right. nope. Matt Ryan is also on the All right. for this Never one. Never mind. Mid-range <laughs> QB 2. Hold on. Yeah. Mid-range QB 2. Ryan's on the bench for that one, even if it is uh, the Raiders. Much worse than I thought. He's been bad without Julio. Uh Good news, though, Austin Eckler is, quote-unquote, close to returning against the Bills. Um, Eckler, he's never had a serious injury in the NFL, as far as I know. And we're not, uh, obviously, coming back, it's a big boost uh, to the Chargers, who wouldn't have to play Kalen Balazs anymore. But if he comes back and he's, like, kind of questionable throughout the week, do you play him, like, with confidence? thinking that he's going to get his normal compliment or is it kind of a wait and see situation? First of all, I don't appreciate you slandering Kalen Balaj, um three straight games of 10 plus fantasy points doing very well for my team. Oh, that... I, I defended Balaj to the death last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you needed to. I heard that. that <laughs> I was... defended him to the death last week, but compared uh, to Eckler, I, I, I'm going to slander him. Yeah. I mean, I think if Eckler is going, you, you do have to consider him. I, I think the thing is just monitor his practice reports. If there's any hesitation at all, then you might have to think that he might be on a snap count. That being said, I think they've had a decent amount of success with Balage out there. So part of me thinks if he's going to play, he's going to be 100% healthy. Like the team wouldn't bother risking putting him out there if he's not 100% healthy. So... I actually lean toward more like that, but I mean, it does depend on, on the, what the reports say. I think if he plays, you, you just start him the way this offense is rolling, the way Herbert is rolling, uh, especially starting his running backs. Like Kalen Balaj got nine targets yesterday. I, I did not know this was part of his game. Like I didn't, I didn't think Kalen Balaj was like a terrible runner, but I definitely didn't think he was any kind of a pass catcher. And he has 18 targets over his last three games. So I think if Eckler can go, just just play him. You wouldn't play him over anyone like who's like a sure thing, but uh, he'll probably fall in like RB twenty ish if he's going. Yeah, and it gives him a little boost that he's up against the Bills, who have just been the defense has not been as good as last year, and they're in a lot of high scoring games because Josh Allen just keeps running in for touchdowns. So yeah, probably going to yeah. be a pretty high scoring game there. Oh, don't come on, Josh Allen been throwing touchdowns. You don't want the Buffalo fans to come after you on Twitter again, do you? I'm complimenting the man. Just let me have this half. Damn. Let no. me let me take half of the half of the compliments there. I'm not saying he's Garbo. Come on. Oh, you're waiting for the opportunity though. I... Yes. Waiting. Just like that that three week span in the middle of the season. That's that's that was my that was my Super Bowl this year. Uh last injury here. Um LaMichael P. Ryan injured a high ankle sprain so he's out multiple weeks which means that by default uh frank gore is now a lead back in 2020 
Um, do you, do you count on Frank Gore with uh, 15, 18 carries a game? I hate uh, this so much. <laughs> I hate this so much. You have no idea how much I hate this. <laughs> Frank Gore is... I, it's, he put up 14 fantasy points in half PPR last week. <laughs> you know how ridiculous that is. He's 37 years old, man. Oh my God. And next week he gets Miami. I have Miami's whatever. But yeah, I, I honestly don't. I'm going to recommend Ty Johnson as a pickup later, but that's just literally based on pure speculation because I just. Are, are you going to trust Frank Gore with a full workload? I mean, I guess Gase will, but Jesus Christ, man. It's just unbelievable. I just can't believe it. Just keeps going. Doesn't matter what what he's gonna end up as. He's gonna end up like as the number one rusher of in NFL history by the time he retires in twenty twenty seven. Just pure longevity. He's gonna end up with the uh, with the Bucks next year. You know, him and Brady retired together. Oh my god, dude. it's just <laughs> it's unbelievable. Flacco and Gore together with the Jets in twenty twenty is insanity. That's the kind of energy we need, though. Is it? It is. <laughs> is it? It's the kind of energy we need. Flacco Gore. That's that's the tandem that that's gonna get the Jets their first and only win this year. The worst part about that is Flacco's low key. Like he didn't have a good game this week, but what was it? Two weeks ago when he was dealing to Perriman, <laughs> and I just had to watch that. I was like, "Are you serious right now?" And to almost beat the Patriots. Rashad Perriman of all people. Are you kidding me? And if not for a Nick Folk fifty yarder, <laughs> would have beat yeah, the Patriots. Man. God, uh, never would have lived that one down. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for the news, unless there's something that came out uh, after I filled in the chart. But we'll just skip that for now. Uh, we can move on to our observations uh, for this week or what we learned. Um, I'm going to let you go first because yours was the the big news of the week, the, uh, the most talked about thing on fantasy football Twitter, on NFL Twitter. Uh, everyone was talking about this, and I'm pretty tired of it, but I want to hear it again just because. I mean, this is just a pro tip that you won't hear anywhere else, <laughs> but did you guys know, like, all right, look, just check your waiver while. Taysom Hill is tight end eligible in ESPN. I know, you guys, that's a surprise. He doesn't play tight end. He's a quarterback, but he's tight end eligible, and he is sick as a tight end. As a quarterback, he is out there Tim Tebowing it up, but as a tight end... All right, I'm joking. Obviously, if you you're on Twitter or anything, if you follow any kind of fantasy website, he was obviously everyone was telling you he was uh, eligible for tight end on ESPN. But I think he just got that eligibility stripped from him, which is that's honestly kind of ridiculous too. Like if you gave it to him at the beginning of the season, that was where you made your mistake. You can't really take it back now. But um, I mean, yeah, as a tight end, obviously fantastic. As a quarterback, he at least gives you that floor, like the rushing floor. And I do not trust him as a passer at all. He literally, that one passing through to Emmanuel Sanders looked like a punt. Like it was going end over end. I cannot believe Emmanuel Sanders caught it. He's not a good pa- passer. But the rushing upside is there. So I don't know. I, I, who do they play next week? Would you start them next week if they play? Let's see. If they play. Uh, let's see. They play Denver next week. Oh, yeah. Are you so starting him? Denver? Yeah, I'd start him. Yeah, I think you have to. I think you have to. I think with the rushing floor, I think he honestly is a, like a high-end QB too, just off the bat. Yeah, but Taysom Hill's one career job is to destroy Alvin Kamara at all costs. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you know that uh, this past Sunday was the first game in Kamara's career where he didn't catch a pass? Like, That's actually insanity. Taysom Hill is actively trying to ruin... Alvin Kamara's fantasy points. Just whether he's vulturing him as a as you know a running back slash tight end slash wide receiver, or just not passing to him as a QB, it's it's ridiculous. It's very clearly intentional, probably. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. He, he just he doesn't like the guy. I, you know, that's why we need Jameis in there, man. Oh, we need more Jameis. Jameis would have been so much fun. Michael Thomas has like forty five targets, but yeah, um, man, dude, Jameis would be. Oof. I miss Jameis so much. I need him to start next year. Well, there's nothing like a Jameis pass. Like when he drops back and he just launches it, it's just like, oh my god, is that gonna be what guy gonna be wide open, or is he throwing to a cornerback? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, that's just a great game to play and watch, you know. But sooner or later, it'll happen. Maybe the Jets. 
If they, I hope so, man. If they don't get Lawrence, maybe the Jets. Anyways, um, I'll move on to my observation. Uh, I learned that Travis Kelsey is like the closest thing to God you're going to find in fantasy football. Uh, tight end is an absolute wasteland, uh, like you mentioned earlier, Kevin. Just um, to put it in perspective, Travis Kelsey has 100 yards in his last three games, like 100 yards in each of his last three games. No other tight end has a single 100-yard game in the last five weeks. Kelsey is so far ahead of other tight ends that the positional advantage you get for taking him is just better than anything anywhere else you can draft. And now it got brought up on Twitter. I don't know if I agree with it, but there is there is chatter of Travis Kelsey first overall pick in redrafts. Thoughts, Kevin? Oh, now that is very bold. I gotta think about that. That's that's pretty crazy because I'm looking at it now. And half PPR, Travis Kelsey has 162 points. Second place is Darren Waller with 109. That is literally 50 percent more production at the position yeah. and then if you're you know that's that's if you have the second best tight end if you have you know tight end 12 you're looking at noah fant who has 76 points so literally double production there yeah that's pretty insane honestly that's pretty crazy i don't know if i could stomach taking them tight number one just because i mean i'm so trained to take running back but i feel like in scott fish this year if you had taken them number one I, i'm willing to bet like Whoever's number one in your division is not fish has Travis Kelsey. Uh, he doesn't. I played him this for week. sure. For sure, in my division, whoever has, whoever the guy has Travis Kelsey is number one. But I mean, oh, that's interesting. Number one overall pick. I mean, uh, the thing about the the running backs next year is who would you take number one anyways? Probably Camara. Camara, Dalvin. Oh, Kamara? Kamara? Dalvin? But it's going to be Taysom. <laughs> <laughs> or you pro- probably McCaffrey again because you know he's going to come back and he's still going to get you know 20, 20 some touches every game. So it's not. No, no, no. Twitter told me Mike Davis is going to split with them 60 40. Mm-hmm. Yep. Look how that turned out. <laughs> Davis had what, two carries before McCaffrey got hurt again? <laughs> who, do you know who this guy is? Have you ever heard of this dude that played, that got a bunch of snaps? I don't even remember his name. I'm trying to find his name real quick. Uh, what is his name for the Panthers? There was a dude who came in. I had no idea who he was, and I think he snaked a touchdown for Mike Davis, and I was furious. Uh, <laughs> what is his name? Uh, I, I think it was like something super boring, like something Smith or something like that. I actually don't know, but that's actually very funny. Rodney Smith. Rodney Smith. Who is this dude? <laughs> he had eight touches for 29 yards. Ugh. Then we're gonna get the the McCaffrey as a system running back uh, discussion all all off season long. That's I mean, I would never argue that McCaffrey is a system running back, but I'll argue till my death that running backs don't matter. Like for fantasy or for real football? For 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 real football and and low key fantasy. I mean, it's just like no no no. Okay, just for real football. Oh my god, why are they showing Ravens Titans highlights? All right, I gotta turn that off. <laughs> um, well, I mean, real football. Just, if you're like if you're the Vikings with all Dalvin Cook, you have like one win. You know, right? But just like, yeah. If you build your team, I mean, what do they have now? They have like four wins. Who cares? Yeah, but it's four versus one. You know, like Dalvin Cook single-handedly won them that that game against uh, two weeks ago. He had when he had four touchdowns. He single-handedly outscored was it the Cowboys? No, it wasn't the Cowboys. I think no. They just lost to the Cowboys. Yeah. Two two weeks ago or three weeks ago, whoever it was, he he single-handedly outscored them. So maybe the Lions or something. But I mean. The point is just you, the team building aspect of it. Trust me, as a guy who's played Madden, you just take my word for it. You spend a lot of money on a running back. You lose out on more important opportunities at other positions. You can find a guy to replace 80% of what Dalvin does. Like, And even if you can't, just draft a dude in the third round, second round, or whatever, and he'll be good for three years. Then just don't pay him and draft another dude. This is true, but you're, you're like, mad. As good as J.K. Dobbins is, if he comes up and is like, hey, I need four years, 68 million, I'm going to be like, all right, sorry, dude. We're going with uh, X running back from South Dakota who ran for 1,800 yards in a week division, week conference. <laughs> uh, at least with Cook or the Vikings, they have Madison back him up. So that's somewhat of a, I guess, decent backup. Anyways. Uh, moving on to moving on up, who do you have? Uh, who who do you got this week? 
Uh, my moving on up is Nelson Aguilar. Uh, this is very shocking to me because I've always kind of hated on Nelson Aguilar. Um, he has been one of the most boom bust players pretty much for the last like four years. Uh, all my like my friends who are Eagles fans all say uh, it's like a huge love hate relationship with him because he does make big time catches, but he also drops stuff in big time too. But I was looking at his game log. Uh, he's since week three, he's played pretty much 76% of all snaps. Um, and he's had two bad games. And the two bad games was one, the absolute shit show that was in Cleveland where they, it was just a monsoon. And then the Denver game where they actually destroyed him and he didn't even really need to do anything. So I'm not saying he's like a locked in starter every week, but he's definitely someone I wouldn't go away from. And his, and his schedule down the stretch, especially these next two games, if you need wins, cause he's playing Atlanta and then uh, the jets. Um, it seems like, it seems like the Raiders are like actually trying to get him the ball. Maybe they, instead of like getting rugs, the ball, I, I'm not really sure what's going on. Yeah, why would they draft rugs just to kind of use him as a decoy? But I mean, Aguilar's legit. I mean, I can't really hate on it right now. He's the wide receiver 31 in standard 40, 41 in PPR. I think he's a wide receiver three going forward. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, Aguilar is clearly the like the second receiving option behind Waller. Uh, as you mentioned, Ruggs is just kind of an afterthought. I think he only had two touches in the Monday Nader against the Chiefs, and those are both in the fourth quarter. Uh, he just was the complete non-factor throughout the rest of the game. Uh, yeah, Aguilar is you know, the, the second guy. He's not going to he said to be very efficient with his touches, I guess, because the targets kind of yo-yo a little bit. But again, on Monday, he had nine targets, 88 yards, and a touchdown. So, yeah, as you said, Aguilar is uh, surprising. Yeah, he's been, he's yeah. been quite good. And the, ne- the next couple of games, like you said, easy matchups and, yeah, easy uh, easy, easy moving on up here for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think it's like the Raiders, I think Carr this year has shown that he can keep up in quote-unquote shootout games, um, whether it's with Mahomes whether it was with, uh, like, uh, Josh Allen, technically, I guess. I mean, he did it with Mahomes twice. Josh Allen did it against Breeze. I think he can throw for, 30, you know, 30 attempts, and uh, Aguilar's going to get a pretty high target share out of those 30. 30-plus. 30 yeah. All right, Nelson Aguilar. Uh, mine is, uh, I guess, off of one performance, I'm going to make a bet here. Uh, no, that's all we need. All we need is one. All you need is one. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Uh what two days after uh, coaches came out or a rap report report came out and it was and said that Naheem Hines was going to get the bulk of the carries. Uh, Hines got like six touches and Taylor got 26, uh, second highest touch touch count of his career. Uh, took it for 90 yards on the ground and another 24 yards on four of four targets. So he was just getting touches everywhere. Uh, second best a game of his career and he also had like. 70 yards taken back on holding penalties. The Colts are called for nine holding penalties. Um, he had a 20-yard touchdown at the beginning of the fourth quarter uh, taken uh, called back because Zach Pascal decided to hold somebody completely away from the play for no reason, and it ruined a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. But uh, Taylor himself said that he was struggling early on, and now he's... The game, according to him, the game has slowed down a bit. He's learning to take what the offensive line gives him. So hopefully he's not running into his his old line's backs anymore. <laughs> he's gonna the vision. Hopefully uh, he's kind of figured that area of the game out, which has been the criticism so far. And if he continues to get big touches, uh, he might finally, finally uh, capitalize on some of that potential he had to uh, to start the year. Yeah, I mean, as a Jonathan Taylor truther, I need this to be true. But I, can we come up with a better, something better than the game is slowed down? Like, I'm tired of here. What does that mean? Like, I, I get what they're trying to convey, but I just hear it so much. Every single rookie or young player who, like, becomes better just attributes to, oh, the game has slowed down. Like, can't you give me something better? Like, oh, I was missing seeing these things, and now I get it. But no, the game is just slowing down. Well, but I mean, Jonathan Taylor's, a, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, like maybe it's just one of those. Now he can, you know, when he when he takes the ball, he can actually see the holes in the line. Now he's not just kind of 
trying to sprint forward into whatever else used to the uh, yeah. used to the massive holes in the o-line from college yeah i had i had um if you look at his receiving stats um he's so much more productive as a receiver than a running back that i had floated out the theory that it, when you get the ball in space as a pass catcher like there's nothing there's no reads to make you just go where you can but as a running back you, you need to follow your line or whatever and that's why he was struggling so that's a little pet theory i had as far as jonathan taylor so it was good to see him i mean it's good to see him get this much usage and he's he's definitely a good, good moving on up player because his schedule down the stretch is just super cake he's got tennessee next week not good against running backs houston who's horrible Las Vegas, who's horrible. Houston, again, who's horrible. And then Pittsburgh in week 16, so you can sit him then. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if he can actually become the bell guy, like, he, I'll forgive everything that he's disappointed in these first 10 weeks, if he can actually pick it up these last six weeks. Yeah, and he's got the, he's got the chance to do it, provided, uh, provided the coaching staff doesn't give 20 carries to Jordan Wilkins next week, which is you know com- they are. completely in the realm of possibility for what they've done so far. You know they are 100. percent Jonathan Taylor's gonna play like 26 percent of the snaps next week, and I and I'm gonna put him in the panic section. <laughs> and then he'll go off for 150. Yeah, and two exactly. Touchdowns. Exactly. Week 13, and then Richard will put him in moving on up. He knows how it goes. Yep, every week. Uh, all right. Well, speaking of the panic section, who do you have? Uh, who do you have there? Uh, so unfortunately, I've got T. Higgins here, and I don't even think it's his fault really. Um, he's kind of been under underscored as like as one of the you know the rookies and wide receivers rookies in this class i mean obviously justin jefferson cd lamb have been dominating uh what's it cherry judy's also been impressive t higgins has been pretty damn good himself he's wide receiver 27 in ppr kind of quietly i think he was available just like three or four weeks ago on your waiver wire you could have picked him up but I think now with Burrow going out, you've got Ryan Finley coming in, and I don't know much about Ryan Finley, but I, I just don't think he can support more than one receiver. Um, I think Tyler Boyd is going to get the majority of the work, and Higgins might see some targets, but it's not going to be the same volume, and it's definitely not going to be the same quality as it was with Burrow. So Higgins is someone I'm legitimately worried about going going forward. Yeah, I'm with you there. Ryan Finley is not somebody, like you said, that's going to support multiple receivers. Uh, second, I can't believe you you left Chase Claypool off your rookie wide receiver list. Oh, yeah. No, that's no, he's a stealer. Like we, we, we claimed the dude like three weeks ago as Asian. That's true. <laughs> we claimed him. Yeah, that's true. Like we, we had this whole discussion and then R- Richard got off topic. We had this whole thing. I can't believe you forgot. Yeah, that. yeah. Chase Claypool is he's legit. Yeah. Um, and he's Asian, so <laughs> what we think. We haven't actually confirmed this yet, but I think our evidence that. was that he was born in, in British Columbia. So that was our that was our proof. I'm gonna tweet at Chase Claypool right now. Chase <laughs> Are you Asian? Yes, no. Hey man. I wanted to know. Oh, this is happening. No. All right. No. Uh, yes, T. Higgins, uh, down arrow Asian? for sure. Are you Asian? <laughs> All right. All right. I'm Tune in next go... week to see what he says. Yep, and we're, we're, we're just both we got we both got yelled at by the the Steelers PR. Claypool blocked us both. Yeah. It is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna go with another rookie receiver, uh, Travis Fulgham, for my panic. Um, great breakout between weeks four and eight. You know, he was the only target for the Eagles uh, while everybody was hurt. But now that Goddard's back, Rager's back, uh, he has not been good over the last couple of weeks. He, against the Giants and Browns, he's combined. He, each game, he had one catch for eight yards. Uh, Carson Wentz keeps targeting him. He had seven targets this past week against the Browns, only caught one again for eight yards. And He's just not really connecting with Wentz, who, by the way, leads the league in interceptions and fumbles. Uh, I think the funniest tweet I saw this week was, Carson Wentz is just fancy Jameis Winston. <laughs> <laughs> so that that one got me pretty good. Um, but yeah, Fulgham struggling a bit. And now Ertz has been you know tagged to return. He could be back this week. So Fulgham's just way down the, the pecking order now. And the, you know, the... 13 target 
150 yard guy that that happened against the Steelers in Week Five is is no more. I don't think Fulgham's uh, going to be a reliable guy anymore moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I what can I? What do you want me to do? Disagree? <laughs> Disagree? Just... Yeah. He's, yeah. got, he's got the, he's no, got the Seahawks he's, next he's week. He's still got it. He's going to be incredible. I mean, looking at his schedule, he does have a nice schedule down the stretch. Seattle, Green Bay is not a good matchup, but New Orleans, Arizona, Dallas. If he can pick it up, if if Jalen Hurts can get in there and 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 actually throw the ball well, I, I don't know. Carson is what? What is the explanation for Carson Wentz being this bad? The the uh, I think it was weapons, but then. They're coming back, and he's still throwing interceptions, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, the thing is, like, it, what's weird is, like, Wentz was able to support him for five weeks, where he was legitimately, I think he was, like, a top three receiver just by numbers through those five weeks, and now he's just nothing? Like, I don't know. It seems a little unbelievable. Well, they are actively trying to get Rager uh, very involved in offense. He second in targets, and first in catches, so they're, they are trying to get Rager the ball a lot, and that's taken away, a lot away from Fulgham. Yeah, that's true. Did you see what Rager said about um, Justin Jefferson? No, I did not. Super soft. Uh, someone asked him, terrible question to ask the dude, but he was like, someone asked him, like, how do you feel like you see like a rookie like Justin Jefferson who was drafted behind you, he's like dominating <laughs> and struggling. Like, this is a terrible question to ask a dude. And he was like, I can't focus on another man's journey. I've had to deal with injuries and he hasn't. Like, dude, come on. Just don't don't make uh, an excuse for yourself or anything like that. Just I don't know. I didn't like the answer. Horrible question, but I didn't like the answer. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a bad question. But uh anyways, well let me find the audio clip here so we can get on to our next segment. Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. All right, as you just heard, it is the Mr. Unlimited time to nominate. Uh, Richard's not here, so we're just going to nominate two guys, and then we'll just have to argue about which, which one gets it. Uh, as you can see on the list, Kev, uh, we, we couldn't decide between Kyler and DeAndre Hopkins last week, so we just kind of gave it to them that. both just fair. for the Hail Mary, which is fair. No, it's not fair. It's completely fair. You guys got to find You guys got to pick up. It's not Mr. Unlimited's. <laughs> Mr. Unlimited is Mr. Unlimited is one Mr. Unlimited. All right, if you were okay, it was supposed to be your pick anyways. Who would you have yeah. chosen, Kyler or Nuke? I would have went with uh, Kyler. Damn. Just because I mean, yeah, Nuke made the catch, but if Mr. Unlimited is is a fantasy thing, I mean, <laughs> Kyler has a better fantasy day. How dare you? Because right, Nuke wasn't fine. Nuke had a great game or whatever, but he ha- didn't have an absurd game until he caught a fifty yard bomb. All right, I'm gonna. Kyler would have had a good game without that. Delete Hopkins from that. There you go. Kyler's the official Mr. Unlimited for week ten. Uh, so week eleven, uh, who you got for Mr. Unlimited? Uh, my Mr. Unlimited for week eleven is Deshaun Watson. Um, oh, I know you had a front row seat to him just play almost a perfect game. Uh, twenty of thirty seven for three hundred forty four yards, two touchdowns, six rushes for six thirty six yards and a touchdown. I mean, he was just incredible. Like he, he made a lot of throws that were just big time throws. Like just straight in a pocket, no one else but his receiver could catch it. Um, I cannot believe Bill O'Brien was holding this dude back. Uh, Deshaun Watson is just a monster. Um, he's back up to quarterback six on the season, uh, even after like a slow start. So I mean, down the stretch, he he has Indiana, uh, he has the Colts twice, but I don't really care about that. I think you're rolling him out there no matter what. And this week, I mean, you always love to see the Patriots lose. You love How to see you. it. How dare you? That's like a bonus point, right? How you score most fantasy you? points on the season, on the week, and you beat the Patriots. Like, come on. I mean, it's not that big of an accomplishment anymore, considering every facet of our team is trash, like trash personified, except maybe special teams. Oh, you got Gilmore back this game, so you don't have that excuse anymore. No, it it didn't help. the The defense still looked bad. The only thing that helped was that Duke Johnson is trash, so they didn't really have a run game to lean on. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna do in that backfield. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's what I mean. Deshaun Watson led the team in rushing yards. He did everything. Yes, he did. Well, you're gonna win this one anyways, but I'm gonna go with Adam Thielen. Uh, dude. Had the catch. Uh, I thought it was a better catch than CD Lamb's catch. 
I don't know. I think a lot of people disagree with me, but I thought his one-handed, you know, right in the corner of the end zone was better than than CD's, but like by hair. But anyways, uh, two touchdowns, 123 yards, eight catches, uh, carried me to a Scott Fishbowl win. Um, so I got a little bit biased in this Mr. Unlimited pick, but and because he proved me wrong, I put Thielen on the panic button uh, or the panic list a couple. Three weeks ago, because he he had gotten fewer than five targets in in three straight games, so I was a little worried. But he back. He had a good game, but I think this one's going to Deshaun either way. Yeah, Thielen had a crazy game. I mean, it's it's more surprising when one of the Vikings receivers has a crazy game, just because you know it's Kirk Cousins. Cousins. But yeah, I mean, if anything, he just supports his receivers. He does. Um, who was like? Do you remember in like a couple weeks ago? In our Slack channel, someone got said like, "Oh, they got offered Thielen for Juju Smith Schuster." Yes. And I was like, "Oh my God, smash the smash the accept button." Yeah, some wild but stuff yeah. goes on in our chats, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like how am I not in any of these leagues where I'm being offered offered absurd trades? Like I have to come up with the trades. But yeah, <laughs> Thielen had a back to back games with two touchdowns. But this this game was pretty incredible, actually. If it wasn't for Deshaun, probably would have been Mister Unlimited. Uh, eight catches for 11 yard. Uh, eight catches on 11 targets for 123 yards and two touchdowns. And he caught COVID after the game. That's efficiency. Yeah, I said he, he, I gave him the extra points for for catching COVID after the game and winning me my stuff this week. But yeah, Deshaun had a better game and he won the game and the Vikings lost. So I, I should automatically get disqualified. Oh, what? For putting, the Vikings for here. I didn't even realize they lost. Vikings lost. So I should automatically what get disqualified for putting here. I forgot about that. I forgot that they lost. So automatic disqualification. Oh man. But yeah, Deshaun, he they won the game. He 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 gets Mr. Unlimited. Oh yeah, they lost to Dallas. They lost to Dallas? Come on, get him out of here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. They lost to Dallas, but you know, like all right, that's that's it for Mr. Unlimited. Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. Well, let's move on to the waiver wire, a particularly weak waiver wire this week. Um, there's not a lot at all uh, other than like Gus Edwards, who's going to walk into a starting position, and Frank Gore, who is charging through into a starting position at 37 years old. Uh, we've already gone through both of those guys. So uh, I'm going to stay on brand and go first with my waiver pick for running backs, uh, James White. He, with Rex Burkhead tearing his ACL, he's out for the year. So White is going to take on most, if not all, of Burkhead's three, four targets a game. Um, Sony Michelle is back, but Sony Michelle's not catching passes. And Damien Harris, as, as much as I have enjoyed seeing him in the backfield, Damien Harris is not catching passes either. So James White will probably get back up to... Six, seven targets a game, especially with how garbage the Patriots receiving core has been uh, this year. So if you're in PPR League, James White, solid sneaky pickup to be go back to his consistent, uh, you know, consistent nine points, no more, no less kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, shoot. I didn't even realize Rex Burks had tore his ACL. I didn't know he was out for the season. But no. yeah, if, if yeah. he's out, then yeah, James White is the only, I guess, pass catcher in that backfield. Um Damon Harris is good, but he doesn't really do that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's a that's a good one. I didn't realize that um, Burkhead had gone out. Did he did? Uh, my yeah, I don't know. It's week week. It's kind of a week week on waiver wire. I, I guess this di- deep in the season, kind of everyone's been picked up at this point. Um, you did mention a couple of the guys, but these are some guys I guess who kind of on the fringe. I, I would expect they're taken in the majority of your leagues, but I could see them being there in some leagues. Corey Davis. That dude is actually having a very good season. Um, destroyed my Ravens. Uh, so, you know, he's a good pickup, of course. Um, you might want to take a look at Kiki Kuti if uh, Randall Cobb is going to miss any time. Uh, Robert Tunyon finally got back into the mix as a tight end. I think he has wide receiver eligibility on sleeper, which doesn't matter, but it's interesting at least. Um, yeah, and I don't know. Quarterbacks, I mean, if you're looking at streamers, I think Kirk Cousins has – uh, Carolina and Jacksonville in the next two weeks, so you could definitely roll them out there for two weeks. Yep, and Derek Carr has uh, the Falcons, uh, like we talked about with Aguilar. Carr's got the Falcons and Jets coming up, so beautiful schedule there. Uh, 
tight tight ends are just waste. No, just man, tight ends. Tri- I wish I could help you guys. I really do. Um, George Akins. Like, what do you want? Like, what do you want to do? Like, <laughs> I, I can recommend someone, and it's just gonna blow up. Like, you want me to recommend Ryan Izzo, who caught two passes for fifty nine yards? Like, I, I don't want to do that. You f- fifty do that. of those <laughs> yards came on that hail mary at the end of the game. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. No, see what, what do you want me to do? You want me to re- recommend Jason Witten who caught one one ball for one yard in the touchdown? I can't, I can't, I can't, <laughs> can't, I can't in, feel good about recommending any of these. In teams. good conscience, I can't tell anybody to add these exactly. people. It would probably be the only one I I could recommend because he was doing pretty well. He had uh, nine plus points in his first two games, and then he got injured. So, and then eleven points this last week. So Aikens, if you're desperate. Hopefully you don't you don't need them, but I was gonna say Taysom Hill in FanDuel, but I don't know if they're still gonna have the, the, the tight end eligibility in FanDuel anymore. No, I think they're gonna take it away. I think they gotta take it away for everybody. That was just the dumbest. I can't believe a DFS site had name, Taysom I, Hill. Yeah. Yeah. I would have went opposite and just went Kelsey because you know everybody was going Taysom Hill. I would have went a contrarian and just gone Kelsey with that one. And you would have lost. But what if Kelsey was cheaper <laughs> than Hill? There's no way. I don't think he was. Did they give Hill backup QB pricing for a tight end? Yeah, I think that's, that's what I think. I think they gave him borderline QB pricing, but they gave him tight end eligibility. Good lord, that's so dumb. <laughs> just, Anyways, yeah. um, just wrapping up the wide receiver waivers, um, Michael Pittman and Jalen Rager are both under 50% owned in Yahoo. So, obvi- I mean, Pittman is already the wide receiver one in, in Indy. Uh, great yards after catch um, talent. And if Rivers decides to throw him the ball a little bit more, he only had three targets against the Packers. But if he gets some more targets, he could be the quote AJ Brown of this year, just late season breakout. He's a big, you know, big yards after catch guy. So yeah, Pittman could be that guy. Not yeah, sure. Pittman is good. I mean, he's just another one of those rookie wide receivers who could be. I mean, this class is just turning out to be amazing. Yeah, and Henry Ruggs is not part of it whatsoever. And Jalen Rager. Uh, Rager's getting there. I think. Oh a- man, I saw I saw a tweet. Um, it was just like Philadelphia really needs to overhaul their wide receiver scouting because uh, it was like they ended up with. Whew, I'm gonna go find the tweet. They ended up with JJ Arcega Whiteside in the um, Metcalf and. Metcalf ahead of yeah, Metcalf and, that, and AJ Metcalf Brown. Year. Yeah, exactly. In that Metcalf year. And then they ended up with obviously Rager in this crazy year. And then there was another dude that they ended up with who was horrible. Uh they end oh, they ended with Jordan Matthews in the Devontae Adams, OBJ, oh. Mike Evans, A Rob class. Yeah. Well, Jordan Matthews at that when he was taken, it was it was said to be a good pick, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I think he was like a second round pick, but I mean it's just you look at all these names, and it's just when you have all three of them back to back. Yeah, pretty. Bad. Well, the Rager one at the time, even at the time, the Rager one was kind of surprising because everybody thought it was going to be Justin Jefferson. Yeah, yeah, so that was, and I think that's why that guy probably asked him. That's still a terrible an question to ask a player. What an asshole that guy is! Hey man, <laughs> terrible this question. This guy that we thought everyone thought we should have taken it instead of you. He's been falling. You've been sucking. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> what a piece of shit that guy is. That's the that's the Philly media. Honestly. All right. Well. All right. Let's get to it. Uh, let's get on to the drops. Um, which Raven you want to talk about first? Oh, I can I can handle both of these. All right. I'll leave the section to you. All right. My drop is Marquise Brown. I hate to I hate to say it, man. Marquise Brown, I love you, dog. But you cannot refer to yourself as a soldier, like spelled like soldier boy, and then come out in the next three games and post a total of five catches for 52 yards on 15 targets. It's not like you're not getting targeted. I get Lamar Jackson, not the most accurate quarterback. I get whatever, whatever, whatever. But you got to make a play on the ball. You got to do something. Again, I'm not really blaming you. Like, it is what it is. I still think you're a talented dude. But very very drop worthy at this point you just you cannot <laughs> referring yourself as a soldier is just hilarious and then getting outperformed by des bryant <laughs> come on man. <laughs> that's you the best part that. of that des bryant oh my god you cannot have zero catches for three uh zero catches for zero yards while des bryant has four catches for 28 you just can't have that happen. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. Now, and then, now oh, if, God, if Joe Flacco right. was the starting QB for the Ravens, how many pass interference calls would, uh, would, yeah, would, 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 would the soldier have drawn? Dude, the soldier would be Torrey Smith 2.0, man. He'd be out there. There it is. He'd be, although Torrey Smith, I, no one will ever give him credit for it. The best pass interference draw I've ever seen. <laughs> No one drew pass interference calls like Tory Smith did. Uh, that's anyways, why. for your drop, don't worry, I got you. I'll yeah, handle this. You got me. Mark, all right, Mark Ingram, big trust. Love you. <laughs> oh my God, you look slow. Oh man. Oh my God, he had all right. He had two carries, one yard total. That's not even like whatever. It is what it is. Coming back from injury, it is what it is. He has COVID now, so he's a very safe drop, but. It's just he they hand him the ball and then he looks a certain way. And then they hand JK Dobbins the ball and he looks like a completely different species of athletic being. <laughs> so while I love Mark Ingram, I'm fairly certain they are not going to be handing him the ball very much down the stretch. Uh as long as you know JK Dobbins doesn't really suffer from COVID. But so feel free to cut Mark Ingram. This offense is just not the same as it was last year. Um, obviously I'm still hopeful they pick it up, but if they don't, well, I guess what I should say is I don't think dropping these two is really going to come back to bite you. That's fair. Yeah, that's right. I think that's fair. I think they might have a, a, a big week here or there, especially Hollywood, just because that's kind of like the nature of his game. Like he might hit a long touchdown and he'll be like, well, Kevin, why'd you drop him? But again, out targeted, out performed by Des Bryant. Come on, man. <laughs> Des Bryant catches his first pass in three years, and he outperforms Marquise Brown. Oh, man, Des Bryant. He does look good in the 88, though, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, he, he did catch a pass, so you're buying that jersey, it's right? Look. It's a good look. Four, four catches on five targets for 28 yards. Obviously, you're not picking him up, but it, it's a good look. It is. But you're buying the jersey, right? That's that's what you told me. You're, you're buying... Oh, yeah, it's coming in for Christmas, yes. for sure. Oh, yeah. DH gate? <laughs> <laughs> that's that dude come on that, that's that's like the you know like coachella you just wear like a super obscure jersey yep i'm wearing that to coachella in 2024 20, when it's safe well I, I have my uh i got my patriots my blue my josh gordon so that's yeah, that's my jersey. jersey exact same yeah that's the exact same type of thing yep that's my jersey all right moving on to our spec ads for the week um i'm i talked about Mims, Denzel Mims a little bit last week, but I'm going to do it again because he keeps getting better with Joe Flacco at QB. Um, that's three out of the four games he's played now. He has at least seven targets. He's had eight in the last two weeks. Uh, this week against the Chargers, he got three passes for 71 yards. Um, he also drew a big uh, pass interference play, which was another, uh, another deep pass from Joe Flacco. So maybe Denzel Mims is the new Torrey Smith. Who knows? Um yeah, more than four, more than forty yards in each in each Joe game. Flacco. Joe Flacco, man, just the master of the pass interference. Legend. Uh, yeah, he Mims looks good. He he looks looks talented. Uh, looks worth the second round pick that the Jets used on him. And if you know he he again just like Rager, he missed a bunch of games to start the year, but he's actually coming through uh, and you know producing. So. And he doesn't have the hardest schedule coming up. The Dolphins have been Dolphins secondary played well outside of this past game against the Broncos, and then he's got the Raiders and Seahawks. So, if you need somebody for the end of your bench or a desperate flex play in case of injury, I think Mims is a uh, pretty solid bet here, considering his his improvement curve since he uh, since he started the year. Yeah, I, I mean, at what point do we just start? picking up all the wide receivers in this class who start getting opportunity because they all look great. As soon as they get opportunity, they all look great. Yeah, they really have. That being said, I, I would note that, um, I don't know if this is controversial, but I think if Darnold comes back, I think his value actually goes down. Yeah, I wouldn't say controversial on that one. I mean, Flacco is just kind of airing it out. and Yeah, I mean, just... Flacco just doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't care. Like He, he got paid already. Um, Darnold doesn't care, but he's also worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's well. You you figure Darnold is he knows he's playing for his job, or you, he knows he's losing his job anyways, right? You he that has to be in the back of his mind. He knows he's losing his job to Trevor Lawrence in eight months. So yeah. Flacco is just, just padding stats. 
you, nobody's I, beating I, Roethlisberger as the ultimate stat pattern. You you heard this conversation Joe, I had with Richard last Joe Flacco passed Joe Montana. Joe Flacco passed Joe Montana for all time passing yards. That is the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Joe Flacco, elite man, the dragon, Joe Flacco. But but yeah, I did hear the, the Roethlisberger conversation, and and yeah, uh, there's no argument from me there. No, Roethlisberger is just the biggest stat patter of all time. I don't elite, elite level stat patter. Yeah. He's throw, he loves throwing those screens. The Russell Westbrook of stat padding, like of football Ooh, of stat padding. Uh, no, Roethlisberger does win, so <laughs> yeah, and his teammates don't seem to hate him. You didn't. You didn't have to do to do Russ like that. Come on. I'll, I'll take every opportunity I can. Russ is going to go to the Knicks, and he's they're going to be the eighth seed. Dude, the Knicks don't even want him. That's how bad. <laughs> the Wizards did or didn't. <laughs> if the Wizards would trade him for John Wall, just kick both those franchises out of the league. <laughs> All right. Uh, who do you got for your spec ad? Uh, my spec ad. I have one serious one and one not so serious one. My serious one, actually, this one's not, this one's very unserious as well. <laughs> My unserious one is Ty Johnson. I just, come on, man. Like, you want me to bet against the 37 year old? I'm here to do it. I'm here to bet against Frank Gore. Ty Johnson, as soon as P. Ryan went out, he caught four or six balls for 34 yards. I know that's not much to really care about necessarily, but I just, I just got to imagine that Frank Gore is not going to handle a full workload. And if he does, he, he's not going to be effective or he's going to get hurt or something. And they're going to, theoretically, they're going to want to see what they have, right? They're, oh, aren't they 0 oh 10, 0 oh 11? Yeah, they like, haven't won yet. Whatever, however many games they've played, they've not won a game. Trying Frank Gore out for next year or something? Like, what the <laughs> hell are you doing? At some point, you need to evaluate your talent and you need to evaluate your run, young running backs. But yeah, okay. If not, then I'm sorry. But it's, you, in this crazy season, you never know. As soon as the running back has any sliver of opportunity, he's probably worth a pickup. We saw it with um, Salvin Ahmed, who no one really thought was good, or no one knew anything about him, but he ended up being a pretty good pickup. So, I mean, Ty Johnson, we've seen him before in the league. Uh, he was with the Lions last year, but uh, I don't know. You know, you could do... No, you you, you probably couldn't do worse. No, you, that's, you're, we're talking bottom of the barrel here. Yeah, I'm I'm not talking about this guy as a spot start. I'm talking about this dude is um you're you're hoping he becomes some kind of a flex play down the line and you just pick him up for depth. And my more serious one, I think I'm early on this, but more serious uh, or like wait, this was your not serious one before or this one was your serious one before? They're both equally unserious <laughs> now that I now that I'm talking about them, they're both unserious. And if you want me to come up with the serious one, I probably can. But I, I would. No, uh, I like the unserious. Let's go with these two. Ones. All right. Jonathan, this is what I do. Okay. I recommend people one year or eight weeks before they're actually worth picking up. <laughs> who was it last year who I was like, dude, everyone needs to pick this guy up. He's super sick. Uh, and he did. Oh, it was Chase Edmonds. Yes, it was last Chase Edmonds. Year, I was off the Chase Edmonds hype train. I told everybody this dude was going to be amazing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, didn't happen. But this year, he was slightly better, <laughs> but not great. Either. Uh, anyways, I'm early on it this week. For sure, I'm early on it because I don't think Carson Wentz is going to get benched. But Jalen Hurts, man, at some point, they got to get this guy in the game, right? I can't believe that they would just – because they still have a chance to win the division. And Carson Wentz is just drop kicking it away. He's been so bad, like against, and it's not like he's playing like real stiff competition. Like if he was playing, like I don't know, if he was playing, who's who's a good defense? Like if he he was having these bad games, like against the Saints and the Ravens and the Steelers or whatever, then yeah, sure. But he just put up three straight duds against Dallas, the Giants, and Cleveland. So I, I don't know. Uh, I, I got to imagine there's something going on with him mentally um, because I don't know. He should be recovered from his injury by now. I would just, I don't know. At some point, don't you kind of have to see if you, if you're in the race to win a division, don't you kind of have to, and your starting quarterback is killing you. Don't you have to see what the backup that you drafted in the second round is going to do. And as we've seen with Taysom Hill, 
a running quarterback like that just has such a floor that I'm pretty sure if Jalen Hurts became the star for the Eagles, he'd immediately be like a pretty high end like quarterback too. Like I would, I think I would start him as like a streamer. It'd be a fun start. I don't know if I would, if I could in, con- in good conscience recommend people start him for his first career start, but it would be a fun, a fun game to to watch and keep track of for sure. That's fair. It's like how I started Tebow in that one league I didn't care about his entire career. Just yeah, I love I doing mean, it. Yeah, like, yeah, just sick fantasy play because the running. Anyways, uh, that's it for our spec as and pretty much does it for the week. Do you have any final thoughts on week 11? Look ahead to week 12. Um, on Thursday, we will see if the Raven season just straight up ends because if we lose to the Steelers, then yeah, just shut it down. The, um, the Browns make the playoffs? Dude, I'll be sick. I'll be so sick. <laughs> uh, oh my God, I'll be sick. I mean, on the back of Nick Chubb, it wasn't Baker, so you can't be like that mad, right? Because Nick Chubb is actually amazing. No, I'll be mad. That's fair. Uh, don't, I'll be mad. I'd be pretty mad. I'll, I'll, I'm going to be mad when the Bills win the division, too, so I, I'm going to be pretty mad at that. You're right. Oh, that's different. You guys. We, we literally just, like, we were like, all right, run it back. Uh, second second favorites. We had the second best odds to win the Super Bowl, and here we are, 6-4, and four, below the Browns. Uh, what other observations do I have? Justin Herbert is the real deal. That guy's sick. Yes. I don't care about his haircut. He's crazy. Yeah, he's uh so very very good. And yeah, I was not high on him going in, but uh, boy oh boy, am I not a quarterback evaluator? No, the Chargers got some flack for taking him that early too. People thought it was a bit of a reach there, but oh boy, the Chargers yeah. scouting uh, scouting department did a great job there. And to think, we might not have seen this if that doctor didn't commit malpractice. <laughs> yeah, I think this has been talked about at length with us even just, if that guy actually injected Tyrod Taylor properly, would Justin Herbert still be on the bench? Who knows? Yeah. Tyrod Taylor would be, you know, he'd have like a 1.2 touchdown interception ratio and he'd be quarterback 18 on the season. <sighs> and Keelan, Keelan Allen would probably have demanded a trade by now. Oh, man, yeah. But can you imagine, though, I mean, obviously Chase Young has been an amazing has been amazing, but can you imagine Herbert with Terry McLaurin? Oh goodness, yeah, that uh, would be cool. Yeah, at least he gets Alex Smith, who is not surprisingly better than both Dwayne Haskins and Kyle Allen. <laughs> just just what objectively a, better. Yeah, I don't know, man. What a what a what an interesting situation that is. Yeah. Anyways, I think that wraps it up for us. Uh, Kevin, where can they, where can everybody find you on social media? Um, you find me on Twitter. Mostly I'm mostly on Twitter at Kevin M as in Mary H U O. I've been on the phone with the IRS all day. So I just said that automatically. Um, yeah. Uh, just probably don't follow me the next two weeks. Cause there's gonna be a lot of bitching about the Ravens and crying about the warriors, but trust me after next week, I'll be fine. I'll be good. Follow. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, you're a good follow either way. I like all your warrior stuff. Because I complain the same way about the Raptors. So we are the same in that sense. You can find me at jchan, C-H-A-N, not E-N. I know it's confusing. Uh, underscore 811. Um, yeah, I'm talking a lot about the Raptors losing all of our big men. But it's cool. It's cool. It's not a problem. Uh, well-timed humor. Three hours too late. Because it takes me a long time to think of funny jokes. Anyways, everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, We'll probably have Richard back next week. But until then, uh, again, thank you for listening, and we'll see you then.